G'day guys, Alfie here. This is another tutorial. This tutorial is going to show you how to get Minecraft Education Edition Worlds opened in MC Edit and bring in some schematics. Some of the stuff I'm doing at the moment and releasing involves schematics. Um, and so this tutorial is sort of to align with that resource as well and support people to get these schematics into worlds. So first thing you actually need is a Minecraft world. So we're going to hit play. I'm just going to create a new one. A new random world it doesn't matter about any of this stuff at the moment um, schematics is what we're going to call this all right and then create and what you want to do is because MC edit can't generate chunks it looks like it does um, when you work with large schematics particularly it does look like it but it doesn't actually it's not able to do it so once you get in and I probably should have made it creative you want to have a bit of a, a fly around because minecraft sort of pretends to generate chunks um, and you'll see what i mean so if i fly up here i've got you know quite a bit of vision but if i open this directly in mc edit not all of those chunks on the outer boundary are actually truly going to be loaded so i'm going to go for a quick little bit of a fly around and, and load a few more chunks um, and Adrian Brightmore has a nice neat little tool that will teleport you around and, and load chunks for you. Um, you just sort of set it going and, and walk away and come back however many um, hours or minutes later to generate a terrain basically. Um, so once I've generated a few chunks I'm going to then just export this world out and we will open it up in MC Edit. So I'm going to save and quit now that I've got a few chunks in there hopefully um, and we will just export that world. All right and that's exporting somewhere so I'm just going to export it to my documents along with every other world that I've ever exported. Um, and now the second thing you need is MC Edit. So the standard MC Edit 2 doesn't work with Bedrock Based World, which is what Education Edition is. Um, so there's this guy called Potshot who has been working or was working on MC Edit Unified. Um, the latest version is 1.60.53. That breaks and far as I'm aware deletes every NPC. So if you plan on working with NPCs at all in your Minecraft Education Edition Worlds and open them in MC Edit after you've put NPCs in, don't use this one. Okay, I haven't tested it myself. I just heard people talking about it somewhere. Um, so I use 1.60.52. Um, so just download it, whichever one you need for Win64 or Win32 um, and run it. So I've got it sitting here, ready to go. So you just run MC Edit. But first, I need to go to my schematics world. All right, rename it from MC World to .zip. If you can't see the .mc world, if you go to the view item here, you can tick file name extension and you can see that it, it disappears. It still knows it's a zipped folder but it actually gets rid of that um, extension so you can't actually change it. Whereas if you put that on you'll be able to see that they're MC World or Zip or whatever and you'll actually be able to change those. Extract that out um, and then run MC Edit basically. The MC Edit will launch on my other screen so it starts with that and then ends up here <laughs> and then you just want to open up whichever one whichever world you just did so ours was schematics and you just double click level dot that and it will open um, and this is our minecraft world and this is also where i left the world so it's put me back where i left the world and you can see that even though i could see all those chunks out in the boundaries there not all of them have been created some of them have so if we go to the chunk view you can see that some of them have definitely been created but certainly not all of them so if you're working with really big schematics you might want to give yourself um, a fair few chunks to work in now for the schematics i'm working with at the moment this is plenty of room 
All right. So to move around, to give you a bit of MC Edit basics here, moving your mouse doesn't actually move your camera. So hold down right click and move your mouse around will actually help you move your camera. Left click and left click selects things. If you accidentally do that, click deselect. Now W, A, S and D don't really move you like they do in Minecraft. They move you around it. It's, it's very different. It's a different feel. Um, and it does take a little bit of getting used to. It is quite awkward. So to move around, I hold down right click and I just use space, shift, up, left, right, you know, WASD to get myself where I want to be. Okay, so that's the moving around bit. Now to actually bring in a schematic, you want to press this button down here that's called import. Okay, so I'm going to press import and I'm going to go to documents. I'm actually going to go back to where I know I have some schematics. Right. So in particular, the ones that I'm working on this for is the ECAS, the ECAS, and the giving station submission station. So I'm going to bring in an ECAS advanced. So you just select the schematic, click on open, and it brings it into the world, something like this. Um, and then you just work out where you want to place it. So I actually want to place it on the shoreline here. Okay. Now, these four schematics that are available as, as part of the resource I'm producing, you shouldn't rotate, okay? Because then the command system um, that I've got set up to support you filling in the commands won't actually work. With a left click, you can sort of temporarily place that schematic. Um, and you can see that if I, this is my entry and it's not on the ground and I want it to be on the ground. So I'm actually going to, this nudge button here, if you hold down left click and press WASD, shift and space, it'll move it around by one block. If you hold down right click, it moves it about five blocks, I believe, um, whichever direction you are. So I actually want to bring it down about five blocks there like that. Um, I probably want to you know, shift it back in here somewhere. It probably needs to come down a little bit further like that. So now I've aligned the front door with the terrain and I'm not worried about any of the rest of this stuff at the back at the moment. Okay, there's a couple of things you want to think about. Copy air. Um, at the moment I've got trees growing in the middle and grass growing in the middle of my room here. If I don't copy air, they will stay. If I do copy air, they will disappear inside. You'll have all the stuff left on the outside, um, but anywhere there is air in this schematic, this will come in. So you need to kind of balance whether it's gonna be easier to cut out the trees or rebuild the terrain in this instance. So I'll show you what happens when I do copy air and I just hit import, all right? And in deselect, you can see I've cut a big slab out of the terrain here the trees have been chopped out of my room. Okay, if I bring in another one, so let's bring in just ECAS. All right, now I'm going to nudge this back and down so that it aligns, so that my front door aligns with the terrain again. And this time I'm not going to delete I'm not going to bring in the air. And what you'll notice is it'll leave um, all of these blocks under here, all these grass blocks you can see in Podzil blocks, they'll actually stay. Now that might have a negative impact on the schematic I'm importing. So you need to think about that. But if I hit import and then deselect, you can see the terrain has stayed. Um, now I don't think that will have any negative impact on this particular schematic, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so that's just something to think about. Okay, but that's how easy it is. You hit the import button, choose the schematic, bring it in, left click it once to position it roughly, and then you can use the nudge buttons to position it where you want and whether you want to have the air, you know, chop it out around it or not so you can access it. Um, 
that's pretty much it. There's heaps more that MC Edit can do. Um, and whether I do more tutorials or not, maybe depends on what else is going on. But the basics of getting schematics in is like that. You can save it with a control S. I'm going to quit. I'm going to close down that. And this here is still the same world, only now if I send it to oops, schematics MC world. Right. If I launch that, it'll bring it into Minecraft Education Edition. And it says level import started. And it's always the second one. All right, it's always the older one. So here, I'm actually going to delete this one. Okay, because it's this one that is the one that's the one I edited, if that makes sense, out externally. It's always the older one when you're bringing it in. We can find where those schematics ended up. There they are. So you can see that these are now in the world here. And I can access all these command blocks quite easily. Um, I'd need to do a little bit of manual modifying of the terrain here, getting rid of those trees and things. Over here, you can see the terrain has been left intact. And if I actually go in here, you can see that all of the dirt and everything wouldn't necessarily be there if I hadn't. If I had have selected copy air, none of this stuff would actually be here. So whether I manually go through and clean this out, whether that's easier, or whether it's easier to rebuild the terrain, um, that's a decision you need to make for yourself, of course, um, based on the schematic you're bringing in. Um, and it does take time and practice, so have a go. Um, and where's the final one? It was around here, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's it there. Oh, that schematic's missing, the pressure plate might need to fix that. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's how to get schematics into Minecraft Education Edition. Thanks for watching. See ya.